Welcome back to the channel. My name is Abom. Welcome back to Football Manager 2021 and Eastern Resurgence 2 with Stawa Bucharest. And our European journey this season has led us to Bosnia Herzegovina. We're in the Europa League playoffs at the fourth qualifying round. We're taking on Sarajevo over two legs. If we win, we'll be through to the Europa League group stage. If we lose, We'll be down to the Europa Conference League, but we will be in the group stages. So no matter what, we've got ourselves into a group stage this year, and I'm really, really pleased with that. So we've done really well to get to where we are, and hopefully we can get something good today against the uh, Bosnian champions, Sarajevo. And if you're enjoying the series, do drop a like down below and leave comments are the best ways to support the channel. And if you haven't done so already, or if you're new, then do subscribe and turn on notifications. We're less than 40 subs away from 1,000. So how did we get to this point? Well, we started out in the Champions League qualifying after winning the league last season. We defeated AIK on away goals, 3-3, uh, but lost to Sparta Prague after a 4-2 defeat in the Czech Republic in that first leg. That sent us down to the Europa League, where last episode we took on champions of Slovakia, Zelina. And we had a really bad day at the back in the first leg in Slovakia. We lost five goals to two, managed to get a couple of away goals ourselves, which was okay, but just a really bad day at the back. Erez had... Uh, one of his worst performances he's had for us in the shirt. It just wasn't good. We turned it around and won 5-0 in the second leg, not allowing a single shot at our goal. A great second leg sent us through to the uh, full qualifying round of the playoffs. 7-5 on aggregate. An incredible performance here. So 10 of these sides, one of them will hopefully beat us, will be through to the Europa League group stages. The other 10 will drop to the Europa Conference League group stages. And after this, we're going to also check on the other Romanian sides in Europe and see how far they've got. Last season, Gazmatan Midias managed to get through their group in the Europa Conference League and got through to the first knockout round. So we'll see if anyone can get further. Maybe we can get further. Who knows? So we're going to go straight into the first leg here against the Sarajevo. We haven't played any league games off camera. Uh, we've had a good start to the season, though. We've won three of our first four games. It was a dreadful start against FCSB. We got a bit lucky against Crayova. Uh, but then since then, we've won 5-1 against Astra. And we won 6-0 away against Repentia. So it's been all right. It's just the European stuff has kind of interfered a little bit. But I'm in... I'm in it's starting to see how far we can get in Europe. Right, we're going to give a debut to Andre Zubele today. He's going to play his first game for us. Okay, so this was the side that won 5-0 against Julina. I'm not going to change it, but we have got Zubele onto the bench. So he could come on. We've got a league game between the two legs against Sepsi, who are currently 13th. And if there's any goals in that, I'll show them to you. Uh, and I think Zubele will make his debut in that match. But for this one, I think we're going to go with the same 11 that played against uh, Jelena in the second leg because we won 5-0 there'd be no reason to change it one of the things I was thinking about with this series is that it's going to be very difficult to actually get all the way to the final of a big European competition because that is going to be the goal win a European Cup with Stour but unless Romania makes some progress in the UEFA coefficients uh, they're not going to gain any more qualification places so no matter what happens if you win the league every season unless Romania makes some big uh, leaps in that ranking, you're always going to enter at the first qualifying round of the Champions League. So you're going to have to play so many games to get through to a European final. It's going to be very, very, very difficult. So I think there is a bit of an aspect of a building the nation sort of save with this, which I haven't really thought about until now. It wasn't intended to be that, but I kind of feel like you have to build the nation in, in some manner to, you know, get more places for Europe. So that makes it a bit easier to qualify for the proper competition. It's not really anything I thought about until literally today, uh, watching a second yellow card on Twitch, who's doing a building a nation to save himself in Sweden. And he's got them to the point where they're like fifth in Europe in the ranking. So they always get like Champions League group stages every season. And I, it makes me feel like Romania as a nation needs to sort of climb up those rankings a bit to, to get more places in Europe. Because at the moment, every time, even if you win the league, no matter how, by how many points, you're always going to enter in the first qualifying round of the Champions League, like no matter what happens. So I feel like we need to try and do some work to maybe help Romania climb those rankings. We might be doing it involuntarily. You, I don't actually know. But um, there might be something to think about for future seasons of this. I don't know how long this is going to go on for. It depends how long it takes us to actually get to a European final. But well, it's definitely something to think about. Okay, now I feel like this first leg is going to be a very similar story to the one against Jelena. Um, we've travelled to Bosnia, you know, and in these away trips, we have struggled. We lost 4-2 against Sparta Prague. We lost 5-2 against Jelena. This one may well go the same way. Um, well, there's a couple of blocks in there by our defence, and it's a Tatar, and I think we're going to win a free kick there. We are. 
I feel like this is going to be another tough first leg, but we'll see. Cimpiano to Dinoza here from the throw. And here's Daniel Toma. Goes for the cross. Ishmael gets there first and gets the away goal. 26th minute. He gets to the ball first ahead of the goalkeeper. And Tafi Ishmael uh, finally hitting some form. It's been a slow start for him this season. But he's managed to break the deadlock here and give us a big away goal as well. So this is it again. Cimpiano to Toma with the cross. And Ishmael gets to the ball first before the goalkeeper, who I don't think has really come to claim that. I think he could have done a bit better there, the uh, the um, Sarajevo goalkeeper. Ishmael is just on side, but yeah, the keeper has kind of not really committed to that, has he? A throw in here with about two minutes left of the first half. It's Lukovic, and it's headed away by Milicevic. And here's Manalo now for Sarajevo. And Romanovic. He's got a couple of shirts around him. Tatar. And back through to Romanovic. Good 1-2 uh, there. Tatar gets it back and it's a low effort into the far post. And Benjamin Tatar scores to equalise for Sarajevo. Not long left in the first half. And yeah, a, a good attacking play there by Sarajevo. That was just good football by them. And the 1-2 the between the two to Romanovic. Tatar gets it back and then has a clear sighted goal. Um, no real good mark in there by us. But it was good football by them. And going in a half time, it's one goal apiece. And I'm not too dissatisfied by that. We've had possession. It's been a pretty close game. As long as we can avoid defeat in this first leg, I'll be pretty confident. Hopefully, we can get a good result in that second leg. I'm just going to ask the guys to get stuck in a little bit and hopefully stop stuff like that happening again. But we'll go into the second half, not change anything else, and see if we can maybe get back in front. But a draw in this first leg in Bosnia is not too bad. I'd be, I, I'm okay with that. As long as we don't do aimless long balls like that because that often leads in us just losing possession and Romanovic is through here and okay <laughs> it's 2-1 to to Sarajevo now and again that seemed a little bit too easy there Erez has not exactly done well there I'm hoping there's not going to be the start of you know many mistakes by Erez he had a bad game in the first leg against Jelena but this was a bit too easy Kozalic through to Romanovic he had lots of space Erez for some reason, he's gone down to his knees. The right back didn't really close him down. Yeah, we need to be doing better than that. And Vasilescu's not had a great game. So we're going to bring him off. We're going to move Tomi into that advanced playmaker role. And we'll bring on Rares Nedelea. Go back to the double mez. Let's try and get another goal here. You know, it's not beyond us, definitely. Cimpiano to Morong. Backwards to Manalake. Nenad Lukovic. Is that his first name? I actually forget. That's a good ball by uh, Nezovic to Ishmael. Can he get us another away goal? No, he can't. We win a corner, though. Good defending by the centre-back. 73 minutes. Denoza's had another pretty iffy game. We're going to bring on Sipos. Move Ishmael to the right. Sipos has got a few goals for us. Like four, maybe five. So we'll see if he can maybe do some more for us. But we'll see if we can maybe get back into this game. Bukovic. Bukovic Biasil. On it now for Sarajevo. That was a, a appalling effort for a tackle by uh, Timothy Sukar. Errors is forced into a save in the end. Okay, let's take it off, get stuck in. Because if you're making tackles like that, you're never going to win anything. So we'll just drop that defensive line a bit and just try and get more players behind the ball. And hopefully not concede here. 3-1 might give us a bit of a job to do. 2-1 is definitely something we can come back from. 3-1 is a bit more difficult. Um, it's been a pretty close game. I think we're unlucky to lose that one. We could have done a bit better going forward. We only had three shots on target. But not the worst away game we've ever had, by far. We defended okay. Like, Sarri over his two goals were pretty good. The first the first goal, the equalising goal, was very good. The second one, I feel like we could have done a bit better with it, especially the goalkeeper. But we weren't terrible in the game. We could have done a bit better going forward. Um, Dinoza hasn't had a great game. And Vasilescu didn't really do much in midfield. But definitely not the worst performance we've had away from home this season. By far. We can come back from that, definitely. Uh, we're going to be missing Manalake for the second leg. He's picked up three yellow cards, so he's going to be banned for the second leg. We do have a game coming up against Sepsi at home in the league. If there's any goals, I'll be sure to show them to you. Uh, we'll come back proper for the second leg against Sarajevo, though. And if there's any transfer news, I'll let you know about that as well. And unfortunately, the first goal has come from Sepsi and Dinoza played a part, a terrible ball into the middle of the pitch. Varga with the ball through to Chalsu, who scores for Sepsi. 1-0 to them in the 15th minute and Dinoza the villain there, def definitely. 
Well, that brings an end to our half where we were utterly dreadful. Sepsi were all over us and we've had less possession. Just been a really bad first half. It's 2-0 Sepsi. Chaoshu wins the ball in the air. Varga gets to the ball first. Chaoshu gets it back. Ball through to Keys, And an easy finish. This is just dreadful by us. I, again, it might be the international stuff. I've no idea, but this is just dreadful. Well, that was full time. It's Stower nil, Sepsi two. We were embarrassing in that game. That was just that was awful. It was just as bad as those FCSB games we've been playing. Nine shots didn't really look like scoring. Sepsi were all over us like a rash. Actually, got more of the ball than us, and we just never got going like ever. Erez made saves. Without him, it could have been a lot, lot more. The defending wasn't terrible, but we just didn't control the game at all. I'm throwing the ball for that one. That was actually embarrassing. Oh, really? You're a fool. So this is the striker that I was talking about that we'd signed. He was very good at 22 years old and homegrown. And he's chosen to join Concordia Kiazna, who have just been promoted from the second division. You've chosen them over the current champions. Right, I think they're offering him more money. But you've turned down the chance to join the league champions. You're a fool. See, this is the guy that we just signed. He would have cost 800k uh, in total. But we did like 250 now and the rest over three years. And he looks very, very good and was 22 years old. And would have been a really good forward for us. Like, he, he was the striker I was talking about that would be happy to be on the bench. But I could trust to come on and score goals if we need him. And he's chosen to join Kiazna, who have just been promoted. You're a moron. Okay, it's the second leg against Sarajevo. We need a win. Uh, we've got a couple of problems. Vandas is injured, picked up an injury in training, but we should be able to bring Nezovic back in at left wing. Uh, Zubele picked up a bit of a knock in the weight room. He should be fit to play. We're going to give him another go. Uh, he wasn't terrible in that game against Sepsi. It's just everyone was bad on that occasion. Uh, Morong we're going to bring out. We're going to start uh, Vasilescu. Dinoza is not doing too well so we're going to bring him out now we are really stuck for options on this right hand side i'm going to move ishmael out wide we're going to give a start to leon sipos and we're going to go back to sukar at center back in place of chimpiano i think that's what we're going to go with i'm going to try and keep the same tactic i think they just had a bad day against sepsi i think it might have been because of the travel because of you know coming back from bosnia that might be what it was i don't know but, like, that's the only thing I can think of for such a bad performance. Like, it's not often that we actually give away more possession than than our opponents do. So, I think it was just a bad day. Okay, the team talk is good. Hopefully, that will lead to a good uh, performance. Because, yeah, we lost in this first leg. We were dreadful against Sepsi. Hopefully, this one goes a bit better. We've overturned um, deficits before in second legs. We did it against uh, Jelena. Can we do it here? And the ball was given away from the throw-in. That's a tremendous start. Uh, Sukar manages to intercept, though. And looks for it. Again, I don't really know who that was to. I know it was a bit of a bad situation, but that wasn't good. And Manalo's through. Oh, come on. <laughs> Can I please have some good luck? At <laughs> the 12th minute in. Erez has come for it, and I think he's completely fluffed it. And again, that comes from us giving the ball away. Uh, Manalo managed to get behind the defence. Erez has gone to ground. I think he's gone over. Yeah, his chips are over him. <laughs> he looks like an idiot now. Ishmael on the edge of the box. Oh, it's off the underside of the bar by Sipos. That was so close. Here's Hodzic. Into the middle for Kizalic. Here's Djokanovic. Zubele should win that. He does. But again, it goes straight back to them. We can't get to the second balls. We're just clearing it aimlessly at the moment. And Romanovic there at the far post. <laughs> it's 2-0. Half an hour in. And that's two away goals now. We have to win this by two. We've got to score four goals now. I think we might have just knocked ourselves out of the Europa League. Oh, dear. What's happened to these guys? Like, this is one of the worst runs of form we've had in a very long time. And unfortunately, we're 2-0 down at home again. This time in just half an hour. But we don't have to score four goals to get through to the Europa League group stages. And that's, you know, we're not going to do that. We're just not going to do it. Wait, Manalake should have been suspended for this. Shouldn't he? He picked up a yellow card. 
I'm sure that said that he should be suspended. I mean, 92 minutes are played. They had, they had two shots. fuck's sake, Stour. Oh my god, they actually FM'd us in the second leg. Oh my god. I mean, we weren't going to score four, but they have two shots. They score from both of the... <laughs> really? We just... We didn't score. We don't deserve to go through. We didn't score, but we didn't deserve to lose 2-0 with two shots faced. Oh dear. Okay, so that is going to send us through to the group stage of the Europa Conference League, which is still a good achievement, I, I think. So I'm not overly disappointed with that. Uh, so we get 255k for that. We get 237 for being knocked out of the Europa League. Uh, so we get £2.6 million just for qualifying for the group stages of the Europa Conference League. So that's really brought our balance right up. We're at almost £7 million now. And then you add in the gate receipts from all those group games and um, the TV money. I think that's going to be really, really, that's going to be really helpful for us. And hopefully that will mean the next season we'll have a much, much bigger transfer budget. So we achieved what we wanted to with the Champions League. The Europa League, they weren't expecting us really to win. And we did. And the Europa Conference League, they want us to be competitive. So I guess with this group stage, they just want us to try. We have got a player leaving. Slavisa Maksimovic is going to be joining Shiroki Brzeg in Bosnia. He just hasn't impressed me in the games that he's played. He came on uh, for the 4-2, I think it was, against, Sla against Sparta Prague. And I, he was the reason, I think, that we lost. And I just think we can do better. So Maximovic is going to be leaving the club. 190k up front. Could rise to 240. It's not too bad. Uh, we'll say goodbye to him. I think he's going to be pissed because we forced him out of the club. We, we did force him out, but thankfully he's not too pissed about it. Okay, so we have the group stage draw for the Europa Conference League. We are seeded fourth because this is our very first time in these group stages. It's only our second season in Europe. So I think that can be expected. And I'm not expecting much from this group. We'll just see how we do. If anything, I'm just more pleased that we're getting some money from this. You see, I'm looking at the second and third teams here because I'm not expecting us to get anything against the top seeded sides. Dundalk, I think we might be able to get something. Malmo, I think it's going to be tough. So we'll try and avoid that one if we can. We've got Olympiakos, Victoria and Vorskla. I'm just looking at teams where we could potentially finish second. Because third place doesn't give you anything here because there's no competition below this. You just need to finish in the top two, I think. And I don't see us getting anything against Victoria. However, Group C, we've got AK Athens, we've got Astana, and we've got Bologna. Now, we did manage to beat a, a Kazakh side previously in this series. So Astana could be something that we can get maybe some results from. In Group D, we've got Betis, Locomotive, and Santetti, and I don't like the look of that one. I think we might be whipping boys there. Group E, we've got Dinamo, Zagreb, uh, Skendia, and Dnipro. That might be okay. I don't know. Uh, Sparta Prague, again, we don't want those. We've already faced them, really. Uh, Zoria and Olympia. We've got Palk, Rapid Vienna, and Antwerp. And then we've got Red Star, Southampton, and Rio Ave. I don't really mind which one we get. I just like to go to some countries we haven't been to yet. So if we can avoid B and C, and if we can avoid F, that will mean three more countries. So let's see. So we're not in group A. We're not in group B. We're not in group C. We're not in group D. So it's going to be one of the bottom four. And it's group G. Okay. So we are going to be the three countries we've never been to yet. So we're going to be against Royal Antwerp, Rapid Vienna, and Pauk of Greece. So I've got no idea how we're going to do. I think we're just going to enjoy it because, you know, we're going to get lots of gate receipts for it. We're going to get TV money for it, hopefully. I'm just going to have fun with it. And if we go out, we go out. If we get through, amazing. So what I think we'll do is for Sunday, we'll play our first group game against Pauk. We'll also play Dynamo. We'll have an eternal derby because it's been a while since we've had one of those on camera. We have been winning a lot of them, but the form we're in at the moment, this one might be a bit tougher. So before we go, I'd like to just see what happened to the other teams of ours in Europe. So who else finished in Europe last season? Three teams in the Europa Conference League. FCSB are in the Conference League. How did they do? Uh, so they beat Hapoel Tel Aviv in the uh, Conference League second qualifying rounds. 
and then went out to Jablonek 3-1 on aggregate. That's the Czech Republic. Vitorol, how did they do? They lost to Siska Moscow. I, th- I think that can be expected. They got a pretty bad draw there. 5-1 loss on aggregate for them. That, that's that's a hard draw. That's a hard game for them. And Gaz, who got to the group stages last season, uh, oh, they just missed out. They lost to Victoria. So they just missed out on the group stages. That was a tough one there as well. They lost uh, in the Czech Republic, but then got a goalless draw at home. So they almost made it to the group stages, but just fell short. So we're the only Romanian side left. Uh, so it's going to be down to us to try and get some points if we can. But we're never, ever going to qualify for a group stage. We'd have to make the top 10 in Europe, in countries, just to qualify for a group stage. And that's never going to happen. The only way that we're going to go straight into a group stage is if we win the lower tier competition. I think the only way we're going to get fast track to the group stages of, say, the Europa League is by winning the Europa Conference League. And likewise, the only way we're going to get to the group stages properly for the Champions League is by winning the Europa League. So maybe that's the path that we need to take. But for now, we're going to try and focus on just finishing top of the table if we can. We'll enjoy the European stuff along the way for now, because I think it's really fun. And hopefully we can continue to do well in the league. I think the European stuff just comes along with it, really. And I'm enjoying it, so we're going to stick with it. But that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like down below and leave comments. And if you haven't done so already, or if you're new, then do subscribe and turn on notifications. And next time, we'll start our campaign in the group stages of the Europa Conference League. And let's see if we can upset the odds and get through, shall we? That's going to do it for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.